don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all of the people. This very day in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them back into heavens, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angel has told them. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. I'd like to thank those of you who braved the weather to come out today. It's immediately after the service, we're going to build the ark. We have had rain. As Tracy had said, the first service, maybe this one may be teary, I don't know. I always get out more tears in the first service, the first time I share something, and then I'm a little better the next service, but I know a lot of you have seen me and seen me cry. <laughs> it's amazing how that switch just flips as you get older, because growing up, I watched my mom crying at movies, and I'm like, Mom, it's a movie, it's on TV, or whatever. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, some McDonald's commercial comes on with some little girl giving away this penny out of the loafer, and I start bawling. <laughs> Not anybody's ever seen that, but it, it's true. And they got me, and I think from that point on, I've become emotional at just about everything. So today, we're going to talk about the journey of the shepherds. Christmas is about journeys. There was the journey of the shepherds from the fields to the stable. The wise men from distant lands following a star. Mary and Joseph, that was a pretty big journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And Jesus, of course, from his home in heaven to a bed in a barn. We journey at Christmas too, don't we? We go to parties and social events. Off to grandma's house we go. To see family and friends. To malls and stores. I haven't been there yet, but to the scales to see just how we've done. To the bank to measure our financial loss. So those things we do journey. The shepherds of the day were common, ordinary folk. They did not view themselves as God's gift to society. They were not the socially elite. They were just common, everyday folk. Most likely, these shepherds were tending their sheep just outside of Bethlehem and were probably tired, working hard, and then their only job was to make sure that these sheep were safe from humans and from animals because if they weren't, if they lost a sheep, it would come out of their salary. And I would say that they probably weren't paid too much to be losing sheep every day and get a paycheck at the end of the week. So these sheep were very important to them. The story today that we have is, is one of life's routine days being interrupted by God. It's his message that came to them that brought a word from the Lord. What do you do with a word from the Lord? The word of the Lord was a word of courage. In verse 10, they say, do not be afraid. Verse 10 also says, it's the good news to those who have been battered by life. Also joy. The word of the Lord gives joy to those who are sad and grieving. And hope. They give the Savior. God still speaks us to us today. Our words may not come from angels and bright shiny things. But he speaks to us through the Bible, through the living words of the Bible. He speaks through experiences of life. Each one of us has a different experience of life. Only maybe each one of us only knows that, what happened to get us where we are today. And the things that happen to us often are what 
forms us and shapes us. But God also speaks through spirit. Sometimes we don't hear this because we are preoccupied and distracted. We're so busy with life that we spend most of our time on the run. I'm going to share a story with you of a young child that's struggling in school. And it, it's a story told about a young child who was having trouble keeping up at school. He worked really hard to keep up with the others in his classroom. But because of his unique challenges, he kept falling behind. As a result, his backpack was crammed full with homework every night. There was no let up. He no longer could play outside with his friends after school. And by the time he had made a swipe at all his schoolwork, it was time for bed. The parents consulted with their elementary school guidance counselor and decided that their son needed to be placed with the class of with slower learners. It quickly became apparent that the right decision had been made. The third grader got his childhood back, complete with after school play, a more positive outlook, and grades that matched the front end of the alphabet. After several weeks of asking his dad if they could play together after dinner, he grew weary of the same response. I'm sorry, buddy. I have a briefcase full of work I have to do. One day, he simply said, Well, Dad, can't they just put you in a slower class, too? <laughs> if we're going to keep from missing Christmas, we're going to have to go into a slower class. It's a wonder that our lives are often spiritually empty. We're not hearing a word from the Lord, one that brings that word of courage, joy, and hope. But let's be realistic. A lot of our commitments are very important. Much of what we do is necessary. Making time for listening to God sounds good, but it's a lot easier said than done. So how, how do we find time to hear? The answer is to intentionally build margins into our lives. Has to say to us. We find the time for recreation. We find the time for shopping and other things that we want to do. We must be intentional, intentional about making time for God. God still speaks, but we have to stop long enough to hear Him. So how are we to respond to a word from the Lord? Do we fear it? The shepherds were terrified, but the angels said, do not be afraid. Are we afraid what God has told us might not work? Are we afraid we might have been wrong? We could doubt it. The shepherds could have doubted their eyes and ears and their senses. They could have said, I don't believe it. They could ignore it. The shepherds could have let any number of things keep them from checking out the story that they had just heard. They could have debated it. They could have sat around by the campfire all night and talked about it. Could we really afford to leave the sheep? What if the owner of the sheep found out? What if something happened to them while we were gone? They could have done that all night. Could they reject it? They could have rejected it saying, it's not for me, this is not my thing. We often reject the word because we don't like what God is telling us. We don't like it because it means change or it means doing something that is new or awkward means doing something that we love, not, it means not doing something that we like doing. The shepherds didn't do any of these. Instead, they heard the word from the Lord, and they responded with action. The journey of the shepherds began with a step of faith. They said, let's go, and they hurried off. That's the right way to respond to a word from the Lord. Take action. Take the step of faith. As I said, we all have our own journeys in life. We never know what exactly is in store for us. As with my journey in the, in the past few months, has been full of a lot of ups and downs. And I'm so thankful to be a part of this congregation and to be moving forward as a part of this youth group uh, in the capacity that I'm going to be um, as associate minister. It is a journey that uh, means a lot to me. And it's one that... Uh, I'm very proud to say that these kids just never cease to amaze me. And one of the things they did for Christmas, uh, they each signed this. It says, so he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them with his skillful hands. 
Psalm 78, 72. <clears throat> this is one of the most meaningful Christmas gifts that I've ever received. Because my heart has always been with the youth of this church, always will be. And to be able to be here through the years to come means a lot to me. So again, I thank you, each one of you youth that took part of that. But we're all shepherds. I didn't look at myself as a shepherd. Each and every one of us are shepherds of God. Maybe not in, in the same capacity, but at some point, some time, anybody could look at you and see what you're doing and either mimic that or choose not to. So you are, in truth, shepherding others. When God speaks, it is important that we take appropriate action. The message of Christmas calls us to action. For some, God calls you to the most basic and essential action, to give your life to Him. He's not looking for your admiration. He's not calling for your approval. He wants your heart and your life. He wants it so much that He came to earth to reach you. He went to the cross to set you free from the sin and stupidity of our past. He rose from the dead to show you that He was telling the truth and to give you a glimpse of what lies ahead for everyone that will follow Him. Perhaps you are one of those who has kept faith on the fringe of your life. Are you content to give God a nod every now and again in the hope that you will be on good terms with Him? If He's really up there, Christmas is for you. The message of salvation is offered to you free of charge. Will you come to Him, or will you continue to run in a hundred other directions? What do you do with a word from the Lord? What has God been teaching you? How has He interrupted your routine life to deliver a message to you? If God broke in on all of our lives with a word, would we ever even hear Him? If so, how will you respond? Invitation to come to Christ is to be honored with yourself. It's not a long journey, but it's a life-changing journey. Admit, believe, confess. For others, God may be calling you to something different. Maybe he's calling you to turn away from something you know is wrong. Maybe he's calling you to mend a relationship. Maybe he's calling you to do something to help someone who is in need. Maybe he is calling you to stop living in the past, stop reliving the hurts, stop making excuses for why you do what you do today. Start over today. Maybe he is urging you to ask for help for someone, from someone else. Maybe he calls you to try some bold new action. Maybe he is calling you to go and tell someone else about the one who came to die in our place. Today, as we join in celebrating the Lord's Supper together, I challenge you to think and pray about how you respond to a word from the Lord's. Commit yourself to take the step. <clears throat>